we're starting at this already? Yes. Yes, we I are. Yeah. <laughs> Look it. I'm not I'm not in plain shape there, bud. What's happening? Not much. Just trying to figure out technology here. What's up, Rev? You look absolutely unbelievable. I oh. swear to God, I'm not just saying that. Petey's uh, blowing smoke, but I'm going to tell you, you look great right now. <laughs> I'm blowing smoke? What do you mean? So he doesn't look like he's in playing shape. Yeah, yeah but, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's hard to take you serious, right? I'm dead serious. What's going on, Thomas? Are, are, let me ask you something. First of all, how's life going? How's everything going? How's the family yeah. How's everyone with uh, the pandemic and quarantine? Is everyone healthy? How, what's new in your world? Yeah, we, we're all healthy. We're all good. Kids are still in school, which is the good part. But after that, there's no hockey, nothing. So nights are long and right now. Where are you? We're in Mini in Stillwater, Minnesota. Okay, so you're in Stillwater, Minnesota. So are you... Where, what are you doing? Are you, you haven't officially announced anything about your plans with hockey. Steve told me that you're, you're, you haven't been responding to uh, in many interviews. So we really appreciate you joining us today, by the way. I, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. You know me. I don't, I mean, I don't love doing this stuff. I mean, I, I don't mind it because I know you guys. So things like this I will do, but a lot of it, uh, I don't know. I, I just try to be, uh, do my Low own profile. Thing. Low yeah. profile. I, yeah. I, no, I, I can appreciate and respect that. And again, I'll, I'll thank you again for your time today. Mm -hmm. Um, are you, are you playing again? I don't are know. I mean, I, like I said, I am, I mean, I'm working out, I'm feeling great shape, but again, I do enjoy coaching my kids, but when I, you know, watch games and stuff, then you, you get the itch again. I'm like, oh, I can still do this. I can still sit in front of the net and pop in 20 goals. <laughs> it's funny we had that conversation last segment with with razor and we 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 talked about your net front presence and your ability to deflect pucks and 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 not only that van but we all talked and agreed on and it kind of goes with my next question how tough you were as a player and I, how's your body feel because i was joking with the guys about what you used to say about chara and how much you you were like, give him a hundred million bucks and just buy him and get him out of the league. <laughs> you remember, I can remember you saying things like that. Like, get him out of hockey. He doesn't need to be in the NHL. He's too good. He's too good. Uh, but how, how does, how's the body feel? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's good. I mean, definitely not playing last year, I think helped, you know, I think I just worked out and I was on only on the ice coaching my kids. So it's not like I got a hundred cross checks, you know, over a month and, and, and taking, you know, pucks to the chest and this and this, I mean, I, I wasn't as tough as you guys. That's, we, we all know that. I think it was a different type of toughness, you know, being, being in the corners, being in front of the net and taking that type of beating. And again, the last four or five years, besides Chara, the league isn't that tough anymore. I think we can all agree on that. I think early on when we all played together and you got the prongers, the hatchers, that that was that was tough you know i mean standing in front of nets crotch and you know there was no penalties back then the ref would say hey loosen up pronger and pronger would look at the ref and was like don't ever talk to me again and <laughs> do you remember did Riv, did Riv ever get you did Riv ever get you when he was in montreal and in, in oh, your I'm first sure. i mean he, he probably had his wooden stick there and he didn't know what a puck was he just knew what the <laughs> back of my neck was that was a club i didn't even have a blade <laughs> on the end <laughs> <laughs> Craig, Craig would say he's like, I didn't play that that dirty. I wasn't that mean. What do you mean? I I just played the game. I'm like, well, I guess I don't you know. know. Again, I don't know if it was really dirty. That's the way it was. I mean, you yeah. go in front of yeah. that, you're taking your punishment, you know. And now the game is the game has changed. You got a lot smaller defensemen who are more mobile. You know, they they don't really, you know, they'll cross check a little bit, but those guys are non-existent really anymore. So you said you, you took off last year. Yeah. You said, you, you know, it, it's nice to be able to, you, you played a long time in the league, healed up your body a little bit, did some coaching with your boys. Mm -hmm. um, how was that experience in, in something different? Like I, I found when I, when I retired and you're not retired, but when I retired, I, I, I didn't really miss the game of hockey. Mm -hmm. I actually missed the schedule that I was on being yep. told when to be at the rink, 
what time your meeting was, right. what time the next meeting was, what you had to do after uh, the, the skate. Um, your day was kind of like planned for you and you were just kind of like a robot. You went to the rink, you did what you had to do, mm-hmm. you came home. How is that transition for you, um, you know, going from not having any, not having a schedule to having no schedule and how was it coaching, uh, coaching your boys? Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. That is that is the hardest part. You know, I think last year, again, I, I, I knew I didn't want to do training camp just because I wasn't 100% committed of playing. But I still was skating with a junior team here about 15 minutes away. So, again, my routine didn't really change much at the start of the year because I was still skating, working out, and just kind of, you know, going week by week, see if I want to sign anything, you know, what teams are interested. And I told myself I'm going to do that till about – you know, middle of December and then could, see could you have that. signed somewhere? Sorry to cut you off finish your story, but could you have signed somewhere, Van? Yeah. I mean, there's a few teams even all the way up to the deadline, but once we got okay. to the deadline, it was one of those deals. Okay. I, you know, I still feel like in good shape, but I'm not in great skating shape. You know, am I doing the right thing? You know? And so I just decided not to sign anywhere. So where's um, your mind now? Like, are you, are you training right now? So we're talking about, uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's December 2nd today. Mm-hmm. You know, the NHL is talking about maybe starting the 1st of January, maybe mid-January. Are you ready to go right now um, if you if you wanted to start? Come on, Revs. You know that better than that. I'm more of a deadline guy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> No, no, definitely not. I mean, again, I feel like in good physical shape, healthy for the most part, but I haven't done any skating. You know, I mean, I've, you know, every once in a while when I skate with my older son's team, you know, at at the end of the practice and I'm gassed after two lengths. So again, it doesn't matter what you do off the ice. You've got to skate on the ice to really get in skating shape. And I'm far from that. Are you the best one out there? Are are you the best one out there though? to, To be in camp in the next few weeks. Are you are you the best one out there with the kids team? Uh not the fastest. No, the <laughs> kids are fast. But, How old is Blake now? Uh he's uh oh seven, so he's thirteen. So he's a bantam here. <laughs> not the fastest. Yeah, there's some there's some quick kids out there. So I mean they're you know, some oh five, some oh six. So there's kids fourteen, fifteen, and they can go. So they're definitely uh quicker, faster than me, but that's nothing new. I still outsmart them any day at uh, the week thomas here. thomas vanek joining craig and andrew here on the instigators wgr sports radio 550 uh potential delivery could interrupt this interview for a few minutes but we'll excuse vanner for a few That's minutes right. he said he would he said he would come back on um Lots of things we want to talk to Thomas about today. Obviously, talking about you know hockey right now. I want to talk to him. You know, did he hear anything from players about the bubble? Um, what does he think about the the season that could be? What does he think of the Sabers changes? Um, you know, has he been watching from afar at some of the moves Kevin Adams has made uh, has, some, has made here in Buffalo? But uh, Vanner, uh, kind enough to join us here. Also, have some stories about you that that I need you to confirm. Some fun stories. Nothing. Uh, no, 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 no. You know what I did? How about the picture I sent in the group chat? I sent, I sent you, all the guys in the picture. I sent you, Roisy, Pacer, and Goose. I sent all of you the group in the group chat that picture yeah. from the Halloween party. Oh yeah. When you went as uh, Dad Souk. Yeah, I mean. Again, those are the things like Riff said earlier, you know, about missing the game. I, I said, I'm, I'm the same, you know, I do I miss the game? I do. But what you miss the most is, you know, the, the family atmosphere you create within a good team. And I think that that's something you don't, you know, there's no more Halloween parties. There's no more Christmas parties. So, so those are the memories, you know, when you see a picture like that, you sent out, it's like, man, that was a, that was a blast. So those are the times, you know, you miss the most as a former player and about not being around. But even even those times have changed, I feel like. You know, the last five years I played, you know, some teams have that camaraderie. A lot of them, they don't. So I think, you know, that's... Why that's is that, though? <laughs> Why? I don't... I, well, you I think played on, you played on a lot of teams. Are, think- they not, are they not all the same in terms of camaraderie and... And bonding? I mean, our team. Oh, I don't think so. I don't. I don't. I mean, not again, at all. I, I think when when we played, I think you, you didn't have to have the best team. You needed the team that really cared for each other, and you can you can make a noise. You know, I think nowadays yeah, the best teams are usually always up there because 
you know, that there's not that, that team atmosphere anymore. I think even the teams that are, you feel like could be right there in the playoffs, if they don't find that little niche of, of being a team and, and finding together, they'll just kind of phase out. And I've seen it. Do you find because there's maybe just more younger guys that just come straight into the league? Like if I, I remember coming to Buffalo mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I was like, I was kind of like the, the lone ranger coming in into our team and, uh, you know, yourself, you know, Ryan Miller, Andrew Peters, Derek Roy, Drew Stafford, uh, Clark Dan, MacArthur, Dan uh, Danny Pae. I mean, yeah. you. this was uh, uh, Paul Gostad. This was an, an extremely tight team. Like, you guys weren't hockey players. You guys weren't like, this is my teammate. Mm -hmm. You guys were like, this is my brother. I've been growing up with this guy since I came into the league. And now you guys have built a bond that was something that was really special. And it was, it was very noticeable here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. And again, and the reason for that is, I think, because we all played in Rochester together and had that year together and had a ton of fun together. And, and success. You know, and, and kind of wanted to go and, you know, we, we all had that attitude. Okay, next year we're going to camp and we want to make – you know, no one said, I want to make the team. It, we, our, our philosophy was we want to make the team and we want to make a difference. And we all did, I think, for the most part, maybe not out of camp, but by Christmas, all of us were there. And, you know, my, my first few years, you know, we had great veterans and the, the Chris Drury's, the Tepa Numenans and, and so on, the Danny Breers and uh, Jay McKee. And so, I mean, again, we had that mix of, you know, guys in their mid twenties, older, older twenties, thirties, who have been there, done that. Then we had a bunch of young guys who, you know, wanted to be on the team. And and I just think we, we gelled really well. Did we have great players? Like, of course we did. But again, it's it's what made us good. I still believe is that we had so much fun off the ice. Thomas Vanek wanting to come to the rink, and yep. that's something that has changed. I think, and and the reason it changed is like you said earlier, it's because the league is going so young. All these, all these guys, they have their skill coach or skating coach and this coach since they're 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And again, when I played and there's a few young guys who were awesome. I love, you know, and I would be like, Hey, just by being fast is great. But once you enter the old zone, you don't get anything accomplished. I said, make a play, have your head up. And some of them want to learn and they're, they're going to be really good. And some of them, they, they feel like they have all the answers. Yeah. And then it's tough because then, then he thinks he's got all the answers. The guy who's played for 10 years wants to help him. And then it kind of goes this direction and not really bonding together. Let's talk about when you were a young guy, Thomas Vanek joining the instigators here. I, I told a, a hilarious story. Hilarious story. First exhibition game. Do you remember when the refs came in? <laughs> Do you remember when the refs came in? I don't know. Do you remember? So it was your first exhibition game. The refs came in. Please tell me you remember this. And the refs gave this spiel about all the rules and everything. And you said, you said to the refs, you raised. Oh God. Yeah, I do remember it now. <laughs> you said to the refs, you, you raise your hand. They're like, yes, Thomas. Cause I think you had them in the American league the year before. Yeah. And what did you say? Do you remember? Do you remember what you said? Or you I, want... I, not the exact words, but it's something to the extent of, you know, like, you want me to help you? Do you want me to help you? I, I was in the audience that night. So what was it? I mean, help me out. It was something yeah. about, you know, I was like, okay, we, we get all of this, but somehow it always ends up evenly or there's makeup. Are you guys going to, are you guys going to call it? Yeah. Are you guys going to call it evenly uh, for the whole 60 minutes or are you just going to call it for some of the game like you did last year in the American league? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that's right. I mean, roughing is hard and I get it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, and I would never yell at refs. That wasn't me. You know, I mean, I would argue and bicker here and there, but because it is hard, it's fast, it's quick. And it's, but again, yeah. the one thing I didn't like, and I, you still see it going on is if you're actually the better team that night, and then you look at the end of the night and it's like, okay, we have six power plays and the other team ends up with five. Like, really? Like you can't just be better and they can not have 10 penalties and we can have one. Like, why does it always have to be even though somewhat even at the end, like just, just do your job. Like if, if you see it this night, tonight, this team is better then just let them be better. That's okay. 
and that was and that was exactly what I said after I, I told that story. I said I loved it because everyone's thinking that, but I just was. I think everyone was shocked that that you were the one, you were the one that said it. I mean, it was just. Did Darcy say anything? Do you, you guys? Did you have a conversation after that? I, I I'm sure we did. We had a lot of them. So. <laughs> 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 it's the Gators, Thomas Vanek joining yeah. us. Um, take us back to that, that to your first year, man. We've we had you on, I think, a year and a half ago. And do you ever think, do you ever, I mean, I don't know if you're like me. I I, I don't reflect back on my career so much for lots of different reasons, but it's more about just how fast it goes. Can I can I ask a question before you get into that? Yeah. I want like I, I'm curious to know. How good Thomas Vanek was when he was younger? I'm like, obviously, you know, I coach, uh, you know, um, young kids right now and get to see kids blossom and the whole shooting match. And yeah. I want to know, like, how good you were when you were a young kid growing up. Like, I, I'm looking at your statistics when you played um, in the USHL, which is the best. Um, you know, American junior league yeah. and wow, it's crazy. Like how good your statistics were. And, you know, that's when you were what, 17 years old. Yeah. I was there my, uh, sophomore, junior and senior year in high school. So 15, 15 for 18. Yeah. And you yeah. moved over here when you were what? 13. I moved when I was 14, a freshman in high school. I went to Canada for a year. So you moved from Austria at 14, and, and where'd you go, Notre Dame? No, I went to Canada, uh, just outside of Red Deer. Lacombe, oh, I thought Florida. that's where I thought you went. Notre Dame High School is a school in Canada that, that recruits a lot of good young players. Too. Yeah, I no, I didn't. I did talk to them at one point, but I decided not to do that and went to uh, just How hard was Deer. that for you? Now, did your parents <sighs> come over was, with you, was, or did you come over here alone? I came by myself, yeah. I had a great host family in the Douglas family. And uh, they kind of took me in, and it, it, it was hard because I, I couldn't speak English. So, you know, people would ask me questions, and I just, you know, would be maybe, yeah, sometimes, you know. So they would be probably saying, are you an idiot? And I'm like, yeah, sometimes, maybe, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of learned English on the go in school. And um, like I said, I had a great billet family, and that really helped me. And so once I got kind of, I, I went there late August and I said by Christmas I was pretty good at speaking and understanding the language and then then things got a lot easier but hockey was the hockey was great and that was kind of my escape from you know school and learning constantly and well don't yeah, you so speak was, a few a other languages don't you speak like German and Czech German and, and Czech yeah you so can, you're you're fluent in German and Czech Yes, yeah. So German's the main language in Austria, but my parents are uh, born and raised in Czech, and then they immigrated in '82 to Austria. So we would speak Czech at home, and then German outside of our house. Wow. Instigators, that voice is Thomas Vanek. We have more time with him today too. He's going to stick with us for the for the remainder of the show until noon. So we look forward to that, and we're grateful for that because he's a tough man to get a hold of. But. <laughs> How fast has it gone, Van? From let's just even go. I said the yeah. start of our NHL careers, but not even our pro careers, but just from the time you left home. Oh, it's you know, it's it's one of those things. It's it's like having having your first kid. It's the same, right? Like everyone tells you, oh, it's the greatest feeling ever, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. And then you go through it, and it's like, man, that was awesome. It is so cool being a dad. And it's the same thing when I first started. I, I don't know if it was Chris Drury or Teppo Newman and said, he's like, kid, just enjoy every game, every day in the NHL because it goes by quick. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It goes by so quick. And I'm like, you don't understand it, right? And then all of a sudden you blink. And I'm like, boom, I'm out of Buffalo. Been here for nine, ten years. Then you get traded here. And all of a sudden you're 35. I'm like, Wow. And then you look back 15 years ago when someone told you, enjoy it, it's going to go by fast. It really did. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, I mean, I look at my kids, like I said, my oldest is 13 and my twin boys are 10. It's like, I still remember them being born in Buffalo. 
is it going to be hard for you to, uh, and whenever that is, but I mean, it's coming. It's, I mean, you're not 24 and I'm saying this to you. Yeah. No, you're, it, it, it's, it's either, you know, soon or two years or whatever it is, but are you, are you dreading that day of saying those words that I'm done? No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm done pretty much right now. Again, I just, I just do it because mainly what Riff said earlier about, you know, not playing all of a sudden is the routine that, that is, that is by far the hardest part because all of a sudden you don't have that schedule anymore. You don't have to be at the rink at 8:45 again. You just kind of, my schedule is, you know, okay, I get up, I have breakfast with the boys and I bring them to school. And then it's like, all right, it's 8:45. Now what? Yeah. So well, that's what you routine, said in the text last week. You're like, oh, let me see what my schedule is. He, no, do you I, remember me telling you when I was kind of going through the same thing? Do you remember me telling you what I did? Oh, yeah. I used to drive around in your car for I hours. I used to drive around my car for hours. Yeah. Because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have a plan for after hockey. Yeah. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time off to kind of allow my body and mentally and physically to heal. But right. there was days that I was just driving around Buffalo, cruising around, wasting gas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, listen, I mean, I, I don't and never missed, per se, the, the, the game in the a sense. I never missed the practices. I never missed the, the power play meeting, penalty kill meeting, team meetings. What yeah. I missed the most was the structure and right. the boys. I yeah. love taping my stick. I love stretching and having that conversation with the guys. These are your brothers. These are the guys you go to work with every day. Mm -hmm. That's something that we're going to remember. We're going to remember things that we did together more than we remember some of our games that we played. And uh, yeah. but no, I, I, you're hundred percent right. And that's, and that is the hard part. Right. And then last year I decided, you know, I want to stay around, be, you know, see my kids play hockey, coach them, which I did. So again, you know, I, you know, my, my younger ones would practice at 5.30 to 6.30. My older one would be on the ice an hour later at 7.30 to 8.30. So once it got to that point, life was awesome. I was back on the ice. I'm like getting the juices flowing, trying to teach kids, doing this. And, and the, the nights went by like this. So, but it's, it's the, the mornings and the early afternoons until the kids get home from school that's when you really miss the structure and the schedule and like, boom. So for me, it was, okay. I did the same. I mean, I would go to Dick's and just walk around Dick's or go to the grocery store. And I'm like, do we need any groceries, honey? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. We need bananas. I'm like, all right, I'll go get bananas and just walk around the grocery <laughs> store for an hour and pick up or go to target and then come home with 50 more things. Right. It's like yeah. just to kill a couple hours. And it's, so then after that, I'm like, I didn't, you know, once I decided I'm, you know, done working out and this, then all of a sudden I'm like, for two weeks, I got real, you know, not depressed by any means, but I'm like, oh, I need a routine again. So then I found my routine. Okay. I got some few, you know, turned the storage room into like an exercise room, got some equipment. And whoa, whoa. Matty Ellis come and set it all up for you. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Me and Matty got similar body types. So <laughs> Matty uh, Ellis told us this hilarious story one day about how he set up a chin up bar at your house. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It's being used uh, as uh that's, you know, the chin up bar is being more used where the bands hang. It's a, it's a coat rack now. Right? Yeah. Not, not too many chin ups, but the, <laughs> well, great spot for the bands. We, but no, we, it's, it, that was part of my routine now. It's, it's, you know, dropping the kids off at school, come home and work out and it kind of gets my energy and my juices flowing again. We got to go to do break. you practice at all? Like, have you been on the ice at all hold, with uh, these hold, young uh, pups? And hold in that thought, man, or hold that thought because we got to go to break okay. and we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll answer that question and we'll talk about the red gloves. Where would he want to play if he could play one more time? Where's his dream place to play that he hasn't played already? And <laughs> well, from Thomas, not many places left. <laughs> Instig yeah, <laughs> he's played for half the league. Instigators <laughs> WGR 550. Can't thank you enough for coming on today. Um, we know you're very busy, you know. Oh, yeah, we're very we, busy. So we know you, know you uh, no, we, we appreciate it. Um, we really do. And and we both talk every time we bring up Thomas Vanek on this show, 
it's always awesome. You were, you were an awesome teammate. You were a generous teammate. And we all, we all, we've talked about it before with you on the show. We always talk about, Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> the video sessions, the, oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> the video sessions. Yeah. I don't um, know. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think anybody, especially Roisy too, Roisy and Max, you Roisy and Max, you guys were like, yeah, we watched two hours of video on you three. I was like, I don't even play like these guys. Why do I got to be in here? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> um, what have you thought of the Sabres moves? I mean, uh, like, I know that you are a fan of hockey. You watch mm-hmm. hockey. You followed the league when you were in it. And I'm curious to know the Sabres made a GM change and then they made a lot of personnel changes on the ice too. And have you been watching what's, what's gone on? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I mean, of course I, I follow, you know, still the league and the signings and this and this. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously I think, uh, with Kevin as GM, I think what you're going to get there is, you know, a first time GM, but what you're going to get is, is a, is a honest person at least. And then someone who's gonna, I think, really communicate with the players let them know where they stand and i think that goes a long way so i think he's you know he's gonna do a, a really good job with it and as far as the signings i thought he he did a real good job you know i think there's still some guys out there that would help the team but again i i, I don't know the the salary uh cap they're in or the struggle so no idea but i think some of the moves they made are definitely uh are trending in the right direction when you think about Taylor Hall and Jack Eichel together, mm-hmm. what like what do you make of that? Well, I mean, Jack, I mean, again, I don't think Jack has had a guy with that type of skill on the wing if they do play together. So I think both of them, you know, staying healthy and then being confident and stuff like that, which they both should, you know, get plenty of opportunities to score and then get points. So confidence hopefully shouldn't be an issue with those two. And, there's no reason they shouldn't have, you know, 85, 90 points each playing together. Maybe more. What about the addition of a guy like Eric Stahl? You know, a guy uh, yeah. 36 years old. He's been in the league a very long time. He's had a tremendous amount of success in the league, has won a Stanley Cup. Yeah. Um, and it's guys that he learned from, guys that he learned from, sat in between in the dressing room, sat in between – Rod Brendamore and Ron Francis. Like, what do you think Eric Stahl is going to bring? And who do you think he's going to affect the most in this dressing room? Well, I know Eric a little bit. I don't know him well, but obviously since, you know, I live here in Minnie and he played here the last three, four years. I don't know what it was. You know, I would skate with him in the summer a little bit. And the one thing I do know about Stahl is, is what you're going to get is, is you're going to get a great person, you know, not just a great player. You're going to get a great person. And I think all those guys are going to benefit because like you said, he's been there, done that. He's been a captain. He's won a Stanley cup. He's got a thousand games. He's got a thousand points. He's, he's done it all. So I think what he's going to help the most is, is your best young players, you know, the Reinhardts, the Eichels, because it's, again, that's, the other thing is, you know, with the league being so young, you always, you know, every, every captain almost now you look around is always your young kid who's the best player. Does that mean he's the best captain? I don't, I don't know, Jack Eichel. Maybe he is. I, I have no idea. But, again, it, there's nothing wrong with, you know, just like you came to the Sabres and you were our captain. I thought it was great. That's what you've been there, done that more than any of us have have done it at the did time. Did you vote for Riv? Did you vote for Riv that year? I voted for Teppo. <laughs> I, I did vote for Riv because, again, he was newer to our group, but I thought he's been there, done that. He was more outspoken than Teppo. I think Teppo was more of a, a leader the way he showed up yeah, and prepared yeah. himself, right? So, and that's that's the difference nowadays. I think that's that's what Stalls he's going to bring, right? I mean, I, I, I don't know if Obviously, they're not going to change captaincy, which is fine, and I'm sure he doesn't care about it. But he's going to be there and and help Jack and, and those guys to guide him through times when it's tough, because every team has go is going to go through tough times. And you know what? I think I think Eric Stahl can add something that many, many, many players in this league can't help Jack with. And this is what I think it is. Mm-hmm. He was a superstar. Yeah. 
at one point in his career. He was an elite player in this game, Eric Stahl, okay? Jack has never dealt on a team with a player that understands what Jack's going through. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, Thomas, Thomas Vanek, you had more pressure than any guy on our hockey team each and every night. It's something that you, fifth overall pick, super high-end guy, comes in, starts tearing the league apart, 43 goals, this, that, and the other. You dealt with pressure your entire career, especially at the beginning. Jack Eichel, five years into the league, going to be six, I think has learned a lot as a player. Mm -hmm. But Eric Stahl is going to be able to be a calming voice and influence because he understands what Jack's going through. You know, he understands what Jack has to deal with every single night with the media away from the game, you know, and, and I think that's why Eric Stahl is so important to this team. It's not only for the young players, like, you know, the, uh, you know, the Dylan cousins, who's most yeah. likely going to be on the team, but Jack Eichel for the very first time is going to look across at a player that basically was him, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 10 plus years yeah. ago. Yeah, no, right? for sure. I mean, Stahl had 100 you, points. You, again, I think you, you said everything. Stahl had 100 points in his first year. Right. No, I mean, you, you said it exactly. But the one thing I don't think you guys, you should forget is, I think what it also does is it gives him another center who can still play. That doesn't mean he needs to play, you know, 18, 19 minutes. But he can probably give you really good 12 to 14 minutes, which at the end, to me, also is going to help Jack to maybe play a little bit less. You know, I don't know what his numbers were, but the one yeah. thing I remember when I got traded to the Islanders and I played with Tavares and Kyle Oposo, which was unbelievable. Those guys were playing 22, 23, 24 minutes some nights. And I was like, "What? this is way too much. And believe me, I love ice time. But that's when you learned what Lindy was really all about looking back at it it was smart you know i mean okay there's gonna be nights you're gonna have 20 21 minutes because of power play time but there's nothing wrong with playing 17 18 minutes and making sure those 17 18 are really good besides having an average of 22 24 minutes and kind of saving yourself here and there so i think that that the stall addition is going to help on that part as well just by having more depth again yeah and you can throw cody eakin into that i think cody eakin signed yeah. as the uh, the third line center you know he's he's a he's a phen phenomenal skater he's he's shown that he can play a two-way game and i think he's going to be a really really positive addition to the sabers lineup for sure thomas vanek we have in a few minutes with you on the other side of the break we're going to go to break right now great insight on the sabers listen if sam plays with stall and skinner yeah why don't you come play on the right side with uh, Halsey and Jack? Hey, we, we might have. Hey, they these guys can skate, and I can just sit in front and make. You can a be the, the and... you can be the trail man into the zone, and then just go right to the net. Let him cycle for a minute, and then go to the front of the net. Work your magic. Has there ever been a team that has That's signed a player solely for shootouts? <laughs> yeah. Thomas Vanek doesn't have to play a shift the entire game. They go to shootout. Boom, shakalaka. I'll, I'll have to talk to Petey about that, how that feels. <laughs> oh! Whoa, <laughs> we don't bring that up here. Petey beats himself down enough. Come on. Right. Uh. Listen, listen, Thomas, you're always free to rip on me anytime you want, my friend. You, you, hey, I've, I've sat them. <laughs> I've you, sat, you, I've you, sat them couple you beers. You bought me <laughs> enough ribeyes in my day. <laughs> that I am more than capable of handling the blows that you want to send my way. Listen, when we come back, let's talk about some of your – we only have a few minutes on this side of the break. Let's talk about some of your best shootouts and some of the best goals. The around-the-world move. Yeah. The slap shot on, yeah. on Hashik, the slap shot on Carey Price. You had some doozies, my friend. Our final segment with Thomas Vanek coming right up. So I was talking about your uh, shootout goals, and I remember the one Hashik. I remember the slap shot in Montreal. I remember plenty yeah. of the around-the-world goals. Which one do you, do you know your top three? No, I don't. I mean... <laughs> What's your best one, Van? What's what do you your mean top three? You only had like top one or three two moves. He only had two moves. <laughs> 
Okay, goalies that you beat. I mean, Hashik, the one on Hashik had to be pretty unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, ha- ha- th- that one's definitely special just because, uh, you know, he- he's a-, a goalie I grew up watching and stuff. So getting even a chance to play against him was awesome. And then, um, you know, to score on him and then have it to so, be. A- so what you're saying is you move. decided to take a slap shot on one of the greatest goaltenders in the game, someone that you idled. That's what you were gonna do is take a slap shot. Was that well, who? I mean, did you take? Did you take a slap shot on Hashik? I think I did the around the world on him the one time, <laughs> and the, the around the world. I don't know. It's it's one of those moves. I actually I think I started it back in juniors, and I was just kind of messing around. At the I do it all the time now. I claim it as my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just one of those deals. I, I was messing around and. The goalie kept dropping their gloves every time I did it. I'm like, this might actually work. That's so, how you came up with that move? Yeah, I was just kind of, like I said, it was in junior hockey. I was messing around, and and I noticed, you know, every time I was doing it, the goalie would drop his glove. I'm like, hey, I'm going to try this more often. The other one I remember was Montreal. You skated in, and you wound up, and it was a slap shot right under the bar. And that thing came out. It was on its way past the goalie on the way out before he even moved. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Again, it's, I, I, that's what I always tell, you know, the kids I coach now or even, you know, other guys I talk to it's, it's, I I don't think I was, I never could shoot that hard. I really couldn't, you know, not like some of these other guys now with the technology, but the one thing I could do is I was pretty accurate, you know, and that's, I mean, as, as my season went on, or as my season, as my career went on, I was more always a high glove guy. And I'm like, man, I got to get another shot in my in my arsenal here. And that's when I got good at the slapper, especially from the right side on the low blocker. So it's 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 certain things that that I could you know do for some reason. Uh, it it's just it was insane to watch some of the things you did in practice, man. It was absolutely <laughs> insane. We got to wrap up. You can see our our producer there. Thanks so much, man. It hey, means the world to us that you would take this time seriously. Yeah, anytime. This I love awesome. I love Zoom meetings, interviews. It's my favorite thing. So anytime yeah. you guys want yeah, me. All, well, all the Buffalo <laughs> media and all the hockey media are going to be looking for your number. Thomas Vanek, Instigators, we're out. One Bill's live next. Thanks again.